This episode of Kobe Explains is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Go to the link in the description and use the promo code Kobe to start watching the world's best documentaries and nonfiction content for just $15 a year. December 10th, 2015 should have been a momentous day for the A350. The jet was making its U.S. debut, with Qatar Airways kicking off passenger service between New York and Doha. Up to that point, the program was on a roll. The plane had largely avoided delays that often befall new aircraft, and it seemed to be exceeding performance targets. Everything was coming up aces until the flight actually got underway. About halfway through its takeoff roll, the autopilot detected an anomaly and slammed on the brakes, aborting the takeoff. And in an instant, all of that promise and all of that smooth sailing came to an abrupt halt. Now, the plane was fine. Engineers checked it out, and the flight took off a few hours later. But this alarming situation would perfectly foreshadow today's strained relationship between Qatar and Airbus. You see, the pair have spent decades cultivating a strong partnership, and it's largely been a happy one. But just like this inaugural flight, it too has come to an abrupt halt. After months on months of quarreling, Qatar is fed up and seems eager to rid itself of its Airbus jets. And if Boeing is smart, they'll help facilitate that process by buying Qatar's A350s. Let me explain. Real quick, folks, my three-year YouTube anniversary is coming up on April 5th. It blows my mind that this community has grown to nearly 100,000 people in such a short period of time, and I'd love to hit 100k before that date. So if you like good aviation videos and you haven't done so yet, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would really mean the world to me. Thanks. First, let's quickly unpack the Qatar Airbus saga. A few months ago, Qatar discovered that some of its A350s were experiencing premature paint degradation. Qatari regulators ordered these jets grounded, citing safety concerns, but Airbus objected. It's contested that the paint peeling is merely cosmetic and has thus refused to help pay for a fix. Now, I covered this paint issue in great detail in a recent video, so if you want to know more about it, I'll be sure to leave a link to it right below that like button. Airbus's lack of cooperation has infuriated Qatar and has led to a string of escalation. The airline first showed its discontent by refusing delivery of the remaining A350s it had on order. Airbus fired back, canceling Qatar's $6 billion order for 50 A321neos, planes that would have been critical for its medium haul expansion. Not to be outpostured, Qatar responded emphatically, currying favor with Boeing and ordering both the 777-8 freighter and the 737 MAX 10. Now, this most recent maneuver has gotten a lot of people talking. Qatar's 777 order was widely expected, but the MAX announcement? That caught just about everyone by surprise. Qatar obviously needs something to fill its Neo void, but the speed at which they ordered the MAX is unheard of. It took them mere weeks, and there was just no way they had enough time to properly evaluate its business case. And at first glance, that business case is shaky. The MAX 10 lags the NEO in range, capacity, and price, which could limit their potential growth. Qatar's management is known to be very meticulous and calculated, so why did they take such a rushed approach here? Well, the devil is in the details. Critically, Qatar signed an MOU for the MAX, not a firm order. An MOU, which stands for Memorandum of Understanding, is an agreement saying two parties will work together towards a common goal. But it's provisional. Though we don't know the specifics of this deal, Qatar likely has the option to walk away without incurring huge fines or penalties. Ultimately, it would appear this deal is more about sending a message than anything else. It's actually quite a shrewd tactic. Signing an MOU gives Qatar a low-risk but highly publicized way to scare Airbus into cooperation. The threat they're making is pretty overt. If Airbus doesn't come to the negotiating table, Qatar stands ready to move to an all-Boeing fleet. The only problem is this kind of move would be nearly impossible for Qatar to execute, rendering the threat hollow and leaving Airbus with all the leverage. You see, an all-Boeing transition would be prohibitively expensive. Consider this. 
In order to go all Boeing, Qatar needs to sell off its massive A350 fleet, a fleet consisting of over 50 aircraft. Now, Qatar initially spent about $20 billion to purchase them all, and since they're still quite young, they haven't flown nearly enough revenue flights to recoup this upfront cost. So if Qatar hopes to break even on the investment, they'll need to sell the planes at close to their initial purchase price. But remember, Qatar's been running around telling everyone that these jets are defective. No airline in its right mind is going to pay Qatar what it wants, especially since COVID has greatly increased the supply of inexpensive pre-owned aircraft. So the airline stands to suffer a multi-billion dollar loss if it chooses to sell. Ultimately, they're stuck. Management has no choice but to hold on to the A350 until its investment is earned back, which could take years. This sobering fact has sapped Qatar of its negotiating power, and helps to explain why Airbus has continued to play hardball. Now, watching all of this unfold must be incredibly frustrating for Boeing. By all accounts, Qatar does, in fact, want to become an all-Boeing shop, but that might change if Qatar keeps flying the A350. Even if they're doing so begrudgingly, continued A350 operation leaves the door open for future reconciliation with Airbus. After all, a lot can happen in a decade, and that's probably how much longer Qatar needs to keep flying the type. Boeing should do whatever it can to snuff out that possibility, and that's exactly why they should offer to take these planes off of Qatar's hands. Now, I know, this idea sounds absurd, and absurdly expensive, but it's hardly a novel concept. Wireless carriers do this all the time, offering to buy people out of their existing phone plans in order to lock them into theirs. Boeing would essentially be doing the same thing here, just at a much grander scale. Of course, the customer acquisition cost would be a bit higher, but Boeing does have a vast cash reserve to work with. It has the means to offer Qatar a truly fair price for its jets, helping to pave the way for an all-Boeing transition. And as a cherry on top, they'd also be generating a ton of goodwill and trust with the airline. Now, this would undoubtedly be a godsend for Qatar, helping them cut ties with both a jet and a jet maker that's lately caused them nothing but trouble. But for Boeing? There are a million ways this could go wrong. After all, what are they going to do with all these A350s? The deal could quickly devolve into a financial and logistical nightmare, so Boeing would need to be confident that the long-term upside is worth it. Well, it just so happens that Boeing pulled off a similar move in the past, and it worked. In 1999, the jet maker purchased 17 brand new A340s from Singapore Airlines. Doing so cleared the way for a 777 order, and today, Singapore has become the third largest 777 operator on Earth. They've ordered 116 777s and counting, at a list price of nearly $50 billion. And had Boeing not purchased their A340s, and not helped facilitate this initial deal, who knows if Singapore would be the staunch customer it is today. Boeing seems poised to replicate that success with Qatar. By locking Qatar into its ecosystem, it stands to earn tens of billions of dollars in uncontested orders for decades to come. What's more, the void that's left through the A350 fire sale would need immediate filling, lining Boeing up to score a near-term deal as well, perhaps for some of the 787ERs I talked about in a recent video. Ultimately, Boeing would be taking a massive short-term hit, but the long-term earnings potential is much, much higher. Now, the deal certainly carries risk for both sides. Boeing still doesn't have a true replacement for the A321neo or LR, which could stunt Qatar's medium haul growth. What's more, Qatar would be placing all of its eggs in one basket, relying on a company that's had a lot of setbacks in recent years. Boeing would also be taking on risk. Aside from the huge upfront purchase cost, the company has no idea how long it might take to find the jets a new home. And if it takes longer than expected, it could prove to be a huge waste of time and resources. But at the end of the day, the potential remains ridiculously high for both sides. Yes, doing so would require a massive leap of faith, but at least they'll be taking it together. So, what do you guys think? Do you think it's smart for Qatar to go all Boeing? Let me know down in the comments section below. Now, if you're still watching this, I gotta commend ya. Not everyone has the capacity to sit through a 10-minute video essay on the economics of aviation. 
But since you did, I'm sure you share my passion for learning, and as such I think you love Curiosity Stream. It's the world's first streaming platform designed specifically for lifelong learners. And with thousands of documentaries covering topics like sports, science, tech, music, and more, it is the perfect place to scratch that educational itch. I recently watched their documentary on the DC-3 and it was fascinating. I like to think I know a thing or two about aviation, but after watching it, I was surprised just how little I knew about this legendary plane and how it shaped our modern world. Now, CuriosityStream knows that spreading knowledge is important, so it's designed to be affordable. If you use the promo code Kobe at checkout, you'll be able to access all of their great content for just $1.25 a month. That's like one-tenth the price of Netflix. So go to the link in the video description to check it out, and thanks again to CuriosityStream for supporting my work. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you'd like to join the Patreon community and help this channel to grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.